Sun Bonani, Jimmy Lang, Abshini. Hello, Huyamora, Huya Aunt, Moloini, wherever you are right now, whichever part of the day you find yourself. I hope you're well, keeping track of those thoughts and striving to be the highest and best version of yourself. Welcome to it. This is the Jewels with Gem podcast, and I am your host, Gigi. And if you can hear that dog in the background, please forgive me. Please forgive me, it has been going off for, I don't know, like the past, I don't even know how many hours. And I'm just like, but talk, I have to record. I have to record. (laughs) But anyway, continuing the introduction to astrology series, this is part two. As always, I have to say a disclaimer though. The information I am sharing with you is just to explain the energies and that not everything is set in stone. I'd like to think of astrology as a cosmic parent or even cosmic guidance and that you are able to work with the energies in order to achieve your current soul mission so you can evolve into the next phase of life. As I always say, the only constant is change. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot it stress the importance of knowing your birth chart as it acts as guidance for your soul's evolution, at least in my opinion and in my experience. Without further ado, in part two, I will be breaking down the modalities, the elements, polarities, and then lastly, the planets. In future videos, we will definitely dive into the 12 houses, planetary house positions, aspects within the natal and synastry charts as well. I love doing aspects within synastry charts as well as natal charts because I just feel there's just there's simply not enough information about these. So I'll definitely be getting my hands dirty with that. However, for now, we will discuss modalities. So there are three modalities. They are cardinal, fixed and mutable signs. The cardinal signs are those that just move it and shake it. Um, The initiators, aka Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. Then we have fixed signs, which are responsible for preservation. If you think about it, anything that's fixed is preserved. It will always stay that way. And once the decision has been made, it is unlikely to change. Also known as the stubborn one, aka Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. Please don't fight me. (laughs) And lastly, we have the mutable signs, which are more adaptable, fluid, flexible, and more open to making adjustments where necessary. Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. So from the modalities, we can now move on to understanding the elements. There are four ancient elements which are water, fire, earth, and air. And under fire, we have Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, followed by earth, we have Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. For air, we have Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. And under water, we have Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. So the signs under the element of fire are those that provide excitement, spontaneity, and vitality. The element earth provides us with stability, routine, practicality, durability, all of the aspects or all of the elements that we can depend on. Air providing relatability, sociability, and an improved intellectual capacity because these are the people that are constantly thinking. These are the innovators, the game changers. While the water element provides us with our emotional drives, enhanced intuition, and intensity as well. So it's interesting to note that yes, you can be a certain, you can be a certain star sign. Like it's not it's not that you know it's not that complicated but then you can have elements within your chart that will change your sign drastically so for example you could be a capricorn and have fire in your chart and that just changes everything hence i always mention in the beginning and at the end of most of my videos that nothing is set in stone but you also need to just go a bit deeper, Papa. Just, just go deeper. 
deeper next we have polarities polarity just means that you know out of the 12 signs six are positive or masculine and the other half are negative or feminine now as a woman saying this of course i am cringing because wow a negative for who negative for any negative for what however i do know that unfortunately these are the traditional terms of astrology and you know i'm not being sexist in any way this is also why astrologers prefer using yin and yang to explain this part to explain polarities so yang describes the more outgoing assertive and objective signs while the yin being the opposite and describing the more introverted receptive and subjective signs so six signs are positive and six are negative now these signs can also be divided in pairs to further illustrate the opposites to each sign so all that i'm saying by that is that aries is opposite to libra and they are both positive cardinal signs cancer is opposite capricorn and they are both negative cardinal signs taurus is opposite scorpio and they are both negative fixed signs leo is opposite aquarius and they are both positive fixed signs gemini is opposite sagittarius and they are both positive mutable signs virgo is opposite pisces and they are negative mutable signs so all this means is that there are two sets to each modality and element now that we understand all of that it's easier to break down the signs because for example um a capricorn sun a capricorn is negative cardinal earth which tells us that the capricorn is more introverted and receptive which is a polarity of the yin with the ability to initiate things which is under the cardinal sign with a strong sense of stability and practicality which is an element of earth and then we have the planets so essentially we have 10 planets so of course that already means that not all 12 houses in your chart will have planets in them but they'll definitely have rulers so rulers is just you know another term in astrology and it just basically means that even though your even though all even though some of the houses in your chart will not have planets in them they will definitely have rulers so each and every house will have a sign that rules over that house right um but anyway we'll definitely explain that um in later in later videos i think i'll also briefly touch on that in this in this um in this in this episode so for now um we're just discussing the planets so the planets are sun moon mercury venus mars jupiter saturn chiron uranus neptune and pluto so generally we all know you know what sun sign we are it's just easier to determine based off of the information that we have so you can either be a capricorn sun a scorpio sun or a sagittarius etc however i feel like i feel like the sun's the sun sign is there's like more to the sun sign than just that um it represents the self you know our individuality our desire and our will for power and how we actually go about achieving things i also feel like the sun in essence is who we strive to be so even though you are a capricorn sun you still strive to be a capricorn or you still strive to have the qualities that a capricorn is endowed with so i know this might not make sense but soon it definitely will the sun is also a representation of the father in your chart next up we have the moon which is your internal self so it it represents your habits your memories your subconscious your emotions and kind of just who you are at the core it is also a representation of your mother so with the sun it being you know 
something that you want to strive towards the moon just already is you just naturally react to certain to certain situations based off of your emotional nature and i think that's why in astrology the moon sign is so important because the moon determines your attitude the moon determines you know your behaviors your instinctive nature so you know if you are a capricorn sun with a moon in gemini then you know to a certain degree you can relate to to um having capricorn qualities but at the same time you're more of a gemini than anything else because you relate to people in a i was about to say gemineic way <laughs> but i know that's not a term but you relate to people in a in a way that is that gemini's would so you probably talk a lot you're probably extremely creative you know um we're not going to talk about the moon signs but this is just to give you an example of how you are more comfortable being your moon sign and i think a lot of the people that are closest to you will know your moon sign and your sun sign is kind of for you know it's kind of like your external personality the personality that you exude to you know the public and then um we also have mercury which is responsible for you know our manner in communication um and communication is so vast guys like mm, there's physical communication there's intuitive communication you know there's verbal communication there's social media communication um you know and i just wanted to include that because people think when you say communication they think you just you just mean talking eh hey, we don't just mean talking you know um if you think about it in a nature if you think about it in terms of nature nature's constantly communicating with each other constantly you know even though it's not seen sometimes it can be heard but it's there's definitely some form of communication that's happening constantly mercury also rules over you know your logical reasoning and your critical thinking ability then we also have venus um venus is all about love um it's all about beauty you know it's about our morals our values what we find comfortable and what we find comfort in um also represents our possessions material or otherwise it also represents the arts so venus is basically just all about aesthetics what you find what you find pleasurable what you find enjoyable what you love how you love your love language basically because i think it's different for everyone yes you may be a capricorn and you might have a gemini you know moon but you also have a pisces moon which means you're quite fantastical you love fairy tales you're quite sensual you're very feminine you're into you know um grand gestures of love actually venus in pisces is like the be all and end all when it comes to love because those people really know how to love but they constantly getting hurt but as i said we're not talking about venus in the signs this is just a generic explanation so that you know we can be on the same page and next up we've got mars which is the planet of action aggression determination persistence physical energy courage mars is also known as the god of war so you already know what that means Jupiter being the planet of philosophy, higher learning, abundance, growth, wisdom, generosity, good fortune as Jupiter is a beneficial planet or a benefic planet in um astro- astrological terms. Um it also represents the higher mind, which honestly every time I read higher mind I'm just like what do you mean higher mind as if it's something that's you know external. of me it's not something that you know is external of me i like to think of the higher mind as the higher self in the sense of the moralistic self the self that will tell you you know right versus wrong and justice and balance it's kind of like the yeah like i said the higher self the better self yeah Saturn represents authority, restriction, organization, endurance, discipline, limitations. 
Saturn is just, you know, that planet that just wants us to face our fears. Um, it's also where we ex- express extreme ambition. Um, I'd like to think of Saturn as just that planet that kind of keeps us in check. Like to be like, it's that parent that will always call you out on your things. It's that parent that will call you out on your procrastination. It's that parent that will call you out on your, you know, gross behavior. It's that parent that will constantly check you and check it will. But there are also rewards to that because Saturn is all about tests. It's all about going through things. It's all about, you know, overcoming your challenges. So you'll definitely get a reward at the end of it. But it's definitely painful if you don't know how to work with, you know, Saturnian energy. Chiron. Chiron is a planet that involves our past hurts and our future healing. So if you're somebody that's interested in, you know, doing your shadow work, then this is definitely the place to start, in my opinion, as it exposes you to like the raw, the really, really raw insecurities which stem from your childhood. So it's really internal and it's as personal as it gets. And trust me, guys, I've shed some tears. I really have. Like when I learned what sign and what house Chiron was in I was just blown away by the accuracy and I promise you once you start on that journey once you start doing this once you start doing the work you start realizing that that is actually how you can heal others around you because you have so much experience of it because you've been through it before it's just you know it becomes more easier it 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 you're able to help other people basically because they experiencing that problem without having done the internal work and it also if i can make a quick example about me when i was going through my shadow work and i don't even want to say it that way because shadow work isn't just a one-stop shop like shadow work is continuous because there's so much to uncover within our subconscious because most of the stuff most of our subconscious we don't even know what motivates most of our subconscious drives we don't even know like why we do certain things that we do why we react the way we react to certain things so if something makes me feel particularly jealous or mad or sad or you know makes me feel uncomfortable i need to go back into my childhood and try and connect the dots from there because that's where it all started right so clearly there's something that has not been addressed in my childhood that I now need to address and I really really need to go very deep and that's why I'm saying that it's like it's basically opening up a wound that already is now a scar it's a very uncomfortable process and some people even think it's unnecessary to go through because it's a scar right so obviously it's healed it's gone through what it needed to go through but of course it's only healed in the sense that time has you know time has lapsed time has you know come and gone so now you kind of have to go deep why are you feeling jealous why is you know somebody leaving on red somebody leaving you on red a trigger for you you know why is somebody doing better than you in life a trigger for you you have to have to go that deep it's really just that deep so um it's not gonna be a la di da blase um journey it definitely is not i don't want to you know i don't want to lie to you it's definitely not on the surfacey level type of type of work that you're going to be doing there there you are doing groundwork there there you are getting practical we are we are bulldozing there we are coming to distract and we need to get you know to the bottom of the bottom of the bottom and then you know we work our way up and that's how we reconstruct ourselves and become better people and help others in the process and then we have uranus which represents innovation, speed, independence, um, everything unexpected. Um, Uranus energy is like having genius aha moments every now and then. Unorthodox creativity and intellect, definitely. Um, and also just a very rebellious nature. These are the people that are like typical hippies. 
these are the people who rules are just a no-no complete no-no um not to say that they can't abide by the rules but they're just not fans of the rules they feel like you know people should just be everyone should just live their life you know and if you want to do that why not that kind of vibe uranus i love uranus energy it's quite prominent in my chart so i don't want to be biased so let me just leave it at that neptune is the part of us that is spiritual that is dreamy that is very confusing um i'd like to think of neptune as like a gateway it's like that very thin line between reality and the other world i don't want to call it the underworld because then it just seems like we're trying to do some we're trying to do some shit but no um i definitely call it the difference between the 3d and the 5d um yes i think a lot of people that have a lot of neptunian qualities are people that just go in and out of reality literally their energy is just not of this world unfortunately and um neptune is also um a planet that that i love i feel that it's just so misunderstood and i cannot wait to delve deeper into neptune and just kind of explain the energy of neptune and what neptune actually means because it definitely or at least the the descriptions that i've read on definitely do not don't do neptune justice at all so um it also um represents our psychic abilities intense intuition as well unspoken things um compassion our addictions our self undoing our self sacrifices deception and illusion so you can already just see just even by those you know descriptions that most of it is not really positive most of it is not really you know descriptions that we would like to associate ourselves with so i definitely hope that i am able to bring a different description to neptune because i feel that you know we're just not doing it justice it is such a beautiful planet and i think you know when i think about it cuz i have venus in pisces in my chart and when i think about you know how venus in pisces is exalted and exalted just means that venus in pisces is the perfect place for venus to be in because venus is all of the things that pisces is essentially so venus is very comfortable in the nature of pisces in the nature of neptune Um so how can something so beautiful and so perfect be bad? You know, I think and and you know Venus in Pisces whoever has this Venus these are the people that really really understand love. I'm not trying to be biased. You can read up on it yourself. <laughs> you can read up on it yourself, but I think the only time that it really becomes negative is the fact that we tend to go above and beyond for people that really just don't even I wouldn't even say deserve it because at the time they would deserve it, but just for people who just don't understand it, who just don't understand how somebody can love with that amount of with that amount of depth and actually mean it and be genuine about it. Yeah, Venus in Pisces. Venus, Neptune, Neptunian qualities. But um anyway, I'll definitely be explaining um Venus in the signs. I'm also excited about that, but that is to come. And then last but not least, we have Pluto, which is all about intensity, elimination, regeneration and transformation. Now, I know most of you are familiar with these descriptions. However, I just need to go deeper. When we say transformation, we actually mean that think of construction vehicles coming to a site of a block of flats and basically bulldozing that until the only thing that you can see is basically the flat earth the flat ground that is pluto if you think of an onion pluto would be 
somebody just basically peeling and peeling and peeling and peeling and peeling and peeling at the onion until you get to that small little bit that's in the middle that's what pluto energy is that's what pluto represents pluto represents you know not even making the old new no they totally like break down the old and then build from scratch (laughs) i remember when um i had a transit when i was checking my transit i think two three years ago and i remember seeing pluto conjunct my sun and i was like oh my gosh because usually when i'm looking at transit i usually look at the definition of what sun represents and the definition of what you know pluto represents and i kind of combine the energies to come up with you know my own my own explanation and then i look to see where the sun is in my chart and where pluto is in my chart so i was really like oh my gosh i know somebody's dying so is it is it you know my father you know because sun represents father so i was going crazy for a couple of days and now in hindsight when i look back i'm just like oh okay so what had actually happened in real time in real life is that my uncle had passed away may his soul rest in peace and then shortly after that my grandfather had passed away may his soul rest in peace and these two people you know um were very important people in my life so it's just unfortunate that at the time you know it didn't really click it didn't really come but the sun also represents male figures so it is it's interesting to me even now when i look back and to see the accuracy of astrology and how it can actually help us okay sometimes really it can make us scared (laughs) because i mean if i had known that like you know um male figures around me are gonna die i probably would have been going crazy trying to think oh my gosh who is it gonna be you know but in hindsight we definitely do understand and if i think about the person that i was two three years ago is definitely or even four years ago for that matter if we really want to go that far is definitely a different person definitely a lot of reconstruction that has happened so and i and i'm grateful for the process it was it was quite painful um i hadn't learned yet how to you know work with pluto energy so it was definitely yeah it was an experience and a half so having all of that knowledge definitely helps us to determine um the rulership of the astrological signs and by that i simply mean that you know the sun rules leo the moon rules cancer mercury co-rules virgo and gemini venus ruling taurus and libra mars co-ruling aries and scorpio jupiter ruling sagittarius saturn which rules capricorn and then uranus taking rulership over aquarius i'm gonna leave it at that for now on that note thank you so much for tuning in let me know in the comments down below what i may have left out or any questions you might have because like i'm always saying let us connect let us learn it together Show me some love and subscribe to my channel. Again, your time spent is much appreciated. Till next time, you know what to do. So keep doing what you do. Peace, love, and most of all, light. I am out.